Hey there, Mr. Colby Sharp. I wish I were saying hi from Philadelphia or hi from New York or hi from Las Vegas where I'm filming a Newberry video with you and all the cool people who are going to appear in your video. But nope, I'm here in my living room and that's okay. I'm here to talk about Julie of the Wolves and I need to be kind of quick, Mr. Sharp, because over there you can see my Christmas tree in a box and we'll go over there in a moment and then the ornaments are over in the kitchen. But I also need to be quick, Mr. Sharp, because I have a meeting in a little bit for the, actually in about six minutes, for the best websites for teaching and learning. We're working on our 2013 list tonight. So let's move on, Mr. Sharp. I'm here to talk about Julie of the Wolves by Jean Craighead George. Sadly, the memorial for Jean was on the same day that I finished reading this book. So I took a moment of silence to remember her body of work and all the great contributions she made to children's literature. Julia of the Wolves is a favorite book among many, many people. I know that Joanne Levy, who I have a feeling might be in your Newberry video, um, tweeted that she loves this book. I was shocked by how much this girl had to go through and what she had to endure. Getting married so young, um, encountering so many problems and difficulties and, and just wanting to live her life. You know, in the beginning, she wanted to get to San Francisco to meet with her pen pal, and her life took a turn. And then she was she had all of these internal conflicts and cultural conflicts and um, trying to figure out if she should choose the way of the Eskimo or if she should choose a different life. And... I would be curious to hear what kids think of this book. I'm not quite positive what age group I would give it to. So, Mr. Sharp, I'm going to ask you that on Saturday um, to whom you would recommend this book. But I'm glad I read it. I'm glad that I finished reading it on the day of Jean Craighead George's memorial because it will have a special place for me. And I'm going to move on now, Mr. Sharp, because let me check the time. My meeting starts in 10 minutes, so I need to get upstairs. But before I do... Uh, I'm here. Here's my Christmas tree in a box. I have a new tree this year. So I need to put this together tonight because tomorrow friends are coming over for a trimmer tree party. Here in the living room are all the ornaments. Let's take a peek inside. All right, here we have. They're all wrapped up, ready to be unwrapped for another year. There's a s'more. There's a cat taking a nap. There's Ethel. All right, and then over here, more ornaments all wrapped up. And then the last box, last container rather. There's Horton. There's a, another cat. Another cat. <laughs> all of a sudden, I've turned into the crazy cat man. The Grinch. Spider-Man, Peter Pan, and all sorts of other funsy things. So uh, maybe my next Newberry video will be over, will take place over here when the tree is actually up. There's a lot of work to be done, Mr. Sharp, and so I'm going to head upstairs now and join my, what time is it, Mr. Sharp, 6.52, and in eight minutes I have a meeting. So I hope you, sir, are having a most wonderful day. And I'm very thankful for this one-take rule because if we didn't have a one-take rule, I would probably do this video again. See you soon, Mr. Sharp, and as always, happy reading, sir.